See, everybody always likes to play about, you know, the problems between Nessie Linux and App Armor, but we're using the same laptop, see? So we're, we're getting along pretty well. <laughs> anyway, all right. There we go. What's that? Reformat laptop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I didn't trust the US. I'm still not going to take USB stick from him, but, you know, I'll download off the web, right? Um, anyway, so... Welcome. I'm here to give kind of an update on SC Linux. Um, the last talk was two years ago at LSSEU, so September 2023. Um, and apologies, we're running a little behind, so I'm going to go a little quicker than planned. Um, but we do have a boff later this afternoon, so um, if you have any other questions or something in depth, if I punt you off to the boff, just come by there and I'll be happy to go into it in more detail. Uh, but anyway, so SC Linux is. <laughs> pretty mature technology at this point. Uh, we've been in the upstream Linux kernel for over 22 years. Uh, we've been part of Android for over 12 years. And I just kind of stopped putting the number of Android devices that are out there. One I haven't checked, I think Google, I don't know if they still publish the information, but it's kind of in the like billions and billions of devices out there that run SC Linux every day without a problem. Um, so it's been a really good success story for getting SE Linux out in front of people and actually really securing devices and providing some real advantages and some real wins there. And beyond those, I mean, we, there's other things, right? There's automotive grade Linux, there's, you know, there's Yocto, there's a number of um, obviously distributions, you know, Fedora. Rel based, Rocky, Alma, um, all those things. Um, you know, we don't talk about those so much because they've they've been out. That's just the way it is. But over the past two years, we did have one new addition that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, Suse is migrating over to SC Linux for all their new releases. So that's that's kind of nice. Um, we're always happy to see more people using SC Linux. So odds are pretty good. Um, you've at least touched an SC Linux system at some point if you've been using Linux for any number of years. Um, if, if you haven't, played with SE Linux, you really have no excuse not to, because there's any number of systems that have at least some basic level of support for it. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, kind of touch on some of the new things over the past two years. So a uh, couple new kernel APIs. Um, some of you may have seen this. We have a new um, LSM syscalls for the first time ever. We have three syscalls dedicated to the Linux security module framework, uh, list modules, um, getting the LSM attributes and setting the LSM attributes. And we have SC Linux hooks for all of these. So if you're, you know, up in the application space and your application needs to be uh, SC Linux or LSM aware, you now hopefully have a mechanism that is not tied to any one particular LSM that you can use and it will work. So we support those. Um, from an SC Linux specific side, we're in the process of deprecating the SC Linux user file in SC Linux FS. Um, if you've never heard of this file, that's fine. It was a very niche thing. It was pretty much only used by login programs. And the user space support has moved away from this since 2020, so it hasn't been in use in quite some time. Um, so we're just slowly started to deprecate it. I believe it was last year we marked it for deprecation. And in 617, I believe we're going to add like a five second pause on the system. We sleep for five seconds, whatever you use it. So if you do have an application that, you know, a few months now slows down by five seconds, guess what? <laughs> um, but we do print a message to the, uh, to the kernel ring buffer. So you'll see something on the console saying, hey, we're deprecating this. Um, odds are, if you're already using that file, you know what your options are to get off of that, but if you're ever confused, you can go to the SC Linux mailing list and we'll provide you some guidance on how to shift away from that. So, uh, as far as access control improvements, um, we've had support for the new IOU ring allowed permission. Um, prior to this, SC Linux did have IOU ring support. You could do all the same restrictions that you can do with the IOU ring allowed permission, but it's a lot easier with this single permission now before you'd have to do some stuff with anonymous inodes and whatnot. So this just is a easier way in policy to restrict IOU ring if you don't want to allow that particular security domain to have access to it. 
We also added the watch mount NS permission to the file object classes. Uh, this is basically just kernel grew a new feature, so SE Linux grew a new permission to be able to gate that feature. Um, you're allowed to basically do um, watches on the mount namespace, and this is the corresponding SE Linux access control. We also expanded a lot of our kernel file load access controls to support, you know, a better level of granularity and to basically also control those operations. You can see we've got permissions for loading firmware, uh, kexec, both the kernel image and the init ramfs, as well as kind of a generic policy load. So basically, if you're loading some sort of policy into the kernel, it's going to call this access control check. And same thing with a certificate load. And we've also got some performance improvements because despite popular opinion, we do actually care about performance. Um, one of the probably the nicer things was that we added a per task directory caching mechanism that in some workloads will reduce the SE Linux pathwalk overhead by about 40%. So that was kind of a nice win. Doesn't require any changes or any work on your behalf. Your system will just go a little bit faster now. Um, in that same vein, we made some improvements to our hashing tables. Um, you know, one of the advantages of being a more mature um, code base is you have a better understanding now of how your system get, is getting used. So some of those decisions we made back in the early days around, you know, hashing functions and a few other things, uh, we can now take a look at in the context of how are these systems actually used. We tweak the hashing functions, we do a few other things, so we get a little better hash distribution, performance gets improved, and some of these hashing functions are a little quicker anyway. Um, we also, this is, is one that I think there's like two points in the slides where I tell you about stuff that's upcoming. It's not quite there yet. So this is merged into Linus's tree, but because 6.17 actually hasn't been released yet, you don't actually get to see this yet. Um, but we added what's called a never audit per domain flag. So if you're familiar with SE Linux policy development, you've probably seen the don't audit per domain flag, which don't audit will basically prevent you from auditing any permission denials, whereas never audit takes that a step further and says just don't audit anything. Um, and that by itself maybe isn't that interesting, but what's kind of neat about this is when you combine this with the permissive flag, which you've probably seen, I'm guessing, um, this allows you to basically sidestep a lot of SE Linux processing for a particular domain. Because if you think about it, if you're in permissive mode, you're not going to actually really enforce any of the security policy for that domain. And if you're not going to audit any of that, well, we just basically get to skip SE Linux for that particular SE Linux domain. So, um, you know, if that's something that is appealing to you, like if you're doing something kind of like in an unconfined domain or something similar to that, uh, this might be interesting. You know, I, I wouldn't recommend this obviously for every domain because it's kind of pointless, but for certain niche use cases, you can have some nice performance wins from that. Um, we've got a number of kind of boot related improvements. Uh, we've got better support for NFS submounts before a policy is loaded. Uh, this is important because SC Linux an SC Linux enabled system doesn't boot up with any inherent boot policy. You have to boot the system up and load a policy. And if you've got a stateless client or a thin client, something that's going to have an NFS root where you're going to load the SC Linux policy, well, you want to be able to load that NFS root so you can load the SC Linux policy. So uh, we've got better support for that. Um, we also have this concept of a user space initial SID, whereas Similar to what I was just talking about, the system has to boot up and everything that executes, you know, on the system before it boots is just basically given a placeholder label that SE Linux then fills in once you load the policy. And before that kind of placeholder label was shared by both kernel threads and any user space processes that happen to start up and persist after you loaded the SE Linux policy. Well, now we basically have two placeholder labels. We have a placeholder label for kernel threads, and we have a placeholder label for any user space processes that are running. So it allows policy 
policy developers that need to start a process very early in the boot process and have that persist after the policy is loaded. Um, you know, you have a new tool that you can use to help ensure it's labeled correctly. Um, kind of a niche thing, but there are some places where it's very useful. Uh, we also improve some of our sanity checking when you load the SC Linux policy onto the system. Um, loading an SC Linux policy, for obvious reasons, is a is a privileged um, operation. So we kind of played a little fast and loose with some of the sanity checks on there because we were just like, well, you have to be privileged to load policy, and so we just assume that you're not loading garbage. Well, we went through and we actually put some checks in, so we're not going to allow you to load garbage anymore. Sorry. Um, so yeah, not not a big deal, but it's nice. If nothing else, what will happen is if it is a bogus policy, it'll get caught earlier in the load process and you'll get a little better error message than you would before. Um, we also now pre-allocate the SC Linux status page. Um, once again, if you don't know what the SC Linux status page is, don't worry too much about it. Um, it's just basically a memory page that you could look at and it would give you some very basic information about the SC Linux uh, status in the kernel. Uh, one of those things was a sequence number. And um, for a lot of weird reasons, that page was allocated on demand. And so a lot of times it would miss the initial policy load on the system. So your numbering would look a little wonky. Uh, but we pre allocate it now. So your sequence number is a nice zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks a little prettier now. Um, container and namespace improvements, because why not, right? Um, so we added Kubernetes support to reference policy, that which was great. Um, we have numerous improvements to the container D domain and reference policy, which is kind of just the generic container security domain. Um, and if you were at LSS in North America in Denver this year, or at least if you watch the videos online, uh, Stephen Smalley gave a great presentation on the work that's been going on the past few years and, and the work preceding that um, about SE Linux namespaces. So I, I can't do it justice in the short time here, but uh, the slides are available on the, the schedule website and that link is clickable so you can click on it and they'll take you right to his video. Um, yeah, so this is still work in progress. This is the other little point in the slide that I said is it's not there, but it's coming. Um, you can expect this in the future. It'll probably be marked as experimental and the API is likely to change a little bit from what Steven's presenting in his video, but still the basic idea is there. Um, number of user space improvements, the tools and libraries. Uh, we have three new tools over the past two years. Get policy load, um, just simply shows you the number of policy load operations that have happened since the system is booted. Uh, SE label compare allows you to easily compare SE Linux labels and unset files. This removes the SE Linux uh, labels or the extended attributes from on disk files. Uh, we also, um, hopefully, you've, if you play with SE Linux policy development, hopefully you've heard of something called SIL at this point, um, Common Intermediate Language, I think. Um, it's one of those acronyms that's been around long enough you kind of forget what it actually stands for. But um, the nice part about it is audit to allow, which you've probably seen at this point, I would think. Um, if you give it the dash C parameter, that will generate SIL for you which is kind of cool. Um, and lastly, with everybody kind of getting off of X11 and moving over to Wayland, we've added Wayland support to the SE Linux Sandbox tool. Um, kind of building on the user space side, we've got a number of policy language improvements. Um, we have something called the extended permissions, um, which, you know, have historically been used for things like um, IOCTLs and just recently Netlink. Um, so we now allow these extended permissions or these XPERMs in conditional policy blocks. Uh, we also support wildcards in the network interface and GenFSCon labeling. And SIL itself had a couple um, language improvements. We've got a lot more flexibility as to how you can represent IP addresses, both individual host addresses as well as subnets. Um, we've got improved support for basically just not self in policy rules. And we actually have a new deny rule, which is kind of nice. It's something we've kind of talked about for years, but we've, we've added it in the past too. 
And the reference policy itself, um, it's added a bunch of new application domains. I'm not going to read them all off, but there they are. Um, we've got multiple system and D improvements, um, mostly just to keep up with the pace of system D itself, um, making sure we have support for all the new bells and whistles that they add in. We had a number of policy tunables to enable network access controls on a per domain basis. So if you want to toggle those on and off for particular applications, you can. Uh, we'll introduce new tooling to help validate some of the context files that ship with reference policy. And further, we've kind of built some of those tooling into the CI subsystem built on GitHub Actions uh, to help kind of improve policy quality. And they have caught a number of things um, since being introduced, so that's good. Um, we're also really lucky if you've never looked at the SC Linux notebook, uh, there's a link here. This was a largely a volunteer um, effort. Somebody was just learning about SE Linux and he just started writing down his notes and turned it into this huge document. It's hundreds of pages long. Um, it's pretty dense and it's maybe not the most beginner friendly resource, but if you want a, you know, SE Linux documentation that's probably the most comprehensive you'll find aside from reading all the source code, it's a good place to start. It's a good reference material. Um, so work on that's been ongoing. We've been trying to keep that up to date. Um, you can either view the whole thing as a PDF or we've converted over to Markdown. So you can actually read individual chapters right through GitHub because GitHub will render that Markdown for you. It's, it's pretty slick. It's great for if you need to like hand references to people over email, you can just copy and paste that particular section from GitHub and send it off. So it's pretty nice. Um, we also have a number of SC Linux man pages. We tried to keep those up to date. And we've also been working on kind of having some some guides and some how tos and some how to get started, you know, with the SC Linux community and doing SC Linux development and putting those into the GitHub wikis. Obviously, you see the links; those will be clickable in the presentation. Um, and that's still something we're kind of trying to discuss. We're currently different ways to kind of improve the discovery of the information that's in the wiki, um, as well as talking about unifying these wikis, maybe having a landing page somewhere. So uh, work in progress, but those URLs will work. And last but not least, we're, we're almost at time, but um, just wanted to say thank you. If your name is listed here, feel free to stand up. We'll give you a round of applause. Um, but anyway, these are the top 21. I was going to do the top 20, but then I figured the 21 person was tied for the same number of commits as the 20th person. So I would have felt a little bad leaving that person off. So anyway, here they are uh, just listed in alphabetical order. So don't read too much into the, the ordering here. But anyway, um, just a thank you to everybody that's contributed over the past two years. Uh, this is across the kernel user space and the reference policy. So anyway, thank you to everyone. And then last slide, uh, this is just more information. Um, I don't think any of these uh, URLs are probably new to any of you, but just in case, uh, the first one is just the SC Linux project. Um, we've tried to kind of lump everything together um, in that one spot. So you'll have the kernel sources, you'll have the user space libraries, you'll have user space tools, which I haven't even necessarily talked about around policy analysis the reference policy, uh, that's a good place to go. If you can only remember one URL, remember, you know, github.com, SC Linux project. Uh, then below that, you've got just kind of the canonical kernel repository. And I mean that canonical in the standard sense, not necessarily the corporate sense. Um, and then last but not least, the mailing list. So anyway, that's it. I think we're, we're like two minutes over, but maybe if there's like one question, do we have time for one question? Oh, we don't have a mic. Okay. Oh, no, we do have a mic. All right. I can at least repeat the question. Thank you. Does anyone have questions? Okay. All Thank right. You, Paul. Thank you very much, guys.